All right, so we did this already. Uh, we discussed this in the last lecture and went over it a little bit in class. Uh, messenger RNA is built from a DNA template inside the nucleus. Uh, the enzyme that plays a role in following the rules for base pairing is RNA polymerase. And RNA polymerase will bind to the uh, parental DNA strand to be transcribed at the region called the promoter. So this defines where the start of the gene is and then uh, the direction of transcription uh, will occur until the entire gene has been transcribed into that messenger RNA transcript. And here you can see that process uh, as discussed before. So RNA polymerase following the rules for nucleotide base pairing, except in RNA, instead of having thymine, you have a nucleotide called uracil. So ink eukaryotes uh, uh, messenger RNA is processed before leaving the nucleus. And what happens is the primary messenger RNA is composed of uh, DNA fragments called exons and introns. Uh, the exons of messenger RNA are the ones to be expressed, and the introns will not be expressed. What are the functions of introns, then, if they are not to be expressed? Well, they might allow exons to be put together in different sequences so that various messenger RNAs and proteins can result from a single gene. And also there are some introns that might regulate gene expression by feeding back to determine which coding genes are to be expressed and how they should be spliced. So before the messenger RNA transcript leaves the nucleus, it gets spliced and capped. So you remove all those introns, keep the exons, and then it's capped, and then it will leave the nucleus through a nuclear pore. And here you can see that there. Uh, here is the parental DNA with its introns and exons. Uh, here is the messenger RNA transcript. Here you can see it being spliced uh, by a spliceosome. So all those little introns are being spliced out of there. And then all the exons are pushed together. And then you get a 5' prime and 3' prime cap. So you get the cap and a poly A tail. And then it will leave the nucleus of the cell. The next step is translation. And during translation, each transfer RNA molecule, here's another type of RNA called tRNA, carries a particular amino acid. So transfer RNA or tRNA molecules transfer amino acids to ribosomes. On each transfer RNA molecule, there is a region called the anticodon. And the anticodon is a group of three nucleotide bases that is going to complement the specific codon of messenger RNA at the ribosome. Remember that messenger RNA, when it's read, fed into a ribosome, is read in triplet code, and that triplet code is called the codon. There is this hypothesis called the wobble hypothesis. And what does that state? It means that the first two positions in a tRNA anticodon pair obey the AU or the GC configuration, but the third position can be variable. What does this do? Basically, it helps to ensure that despite changes in DNA-based sequences, the correct sequence of amino acids will result in a protein. So if you look, here is the typical structure uh, of a tRNA molecule where you have these hairpin loops. So the end of the TNR, tRNA molecule has the amino acid attached. This amino acid happens to be leucine. And then the tRNA consists of uh, complementary or base pairing regions as found in each hairpin loop here. The end of the tRNA molecule contains the anticodon. So if you look, the tRNA anticodon here is GAA. As the messenger RNA codon comes in place, that complements CUU. So when CUU comes into the ribosome, that tRNA molecule will match up with GAA and the amino acids to come into play there would be leucine. Do not get confused the anticodon and the codon. When you're using your genetic code, you're going to use the messenger RNA codon to determine which amino acid will come into play there. So if you look, here you look at a tRNA molecule. Here would be the amino acid end. Down here would be the anticodon end. If you look at a, a space filling model of the tRNA. The next type of RNA molecule that plays a role in translation is ribosomal RNA, also abbreviated RRNA. 
it is produced from a DNA template in the nucleolus of a nucleus. So remember, in the nucleolus is where ribosomes are found. Well, ribosomes are made uh, in the nucleolus, and that would be our RNA. A polyribosome is several ribosomes that are often attached to and translating the same messenger RNA molecule. So if you look at ribosome structure, here you have it. Uh, here you have a small subunit in the ribosome. Here is the larger subunit. And you have three different tRNA binding sites. And we'll look at those sites a little bit later. So basically, when you look at the overall steps of translation in protein synthesis, you have uh, initiation, you have elongation of the polypeptide chain, and then you have termination. Initiation will be started when you have that start codon coming into play, AUG, and then you'd have elongation as each codon is read, bringing in the corresponding amino acid. And then termination is when one of the three stop codons come into place. So initiation. Initiation begins with the pro uh, process of polypeptide production. Initiation is the step that brings all the translation components together. So you get the, the small ribosomal subunit, you get the large ribosomal subunit, and inside you have the three sites. You have the A site, which is the amino acid site. Then you have the P site, which is the polypeptide site. That's where the polypeptide will be built. And then you have the E site, which will be the exit site. Elongation, a polypeptide increases in length, one amino acid at a time. And here you can see that primary structure of protein being built. Uh, each amino acid there represented by a different colored sphere. And the bond between those adjoining amino acids would be a peptide bond that is formed after a dehydration synthesis reaction. So here you can see uh, the overall review of the gene expression. Uh, one, the DNA nucleus serves as the template for messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is processed before leaving the nucleus. That would be transcription. As the messenger RNA leaves the nuclear pore, it binds to those small and larger uh, ribosomal subunits. The messenger RNA moves to the cytoplasm and becomes associated with the ribosome. tRNAs with anticodons carry the amino acid to messenger RNA. During the initiation, anticodon codon complementary base pairing begins as the rival subunits come together at a start codon. And there you can see that start codon being AUG. And then eventually, during the elongation stage, the polypeptide synthesis takes place one amino acid at a time. Eventually, the ribosome attaches to the rough ER, polypeptide enters the lumen, where it folds and is modified. And then eventually, uh, you have the termination step when the ribosome reaches one of the three stop codons and the messenger RNA and ribosomal subunits are disbanded from each other. So, participants in gene expression. You have the DNA, which contains the genetic information. You have messenger RNA, which has the codons. You have tRNAs, which has the anticodons. You have ribosomal RNA located on ribosomes. It is the cytoprotein synthesis. You have the amino acid, which is a monomer of a polypeptide. And then, of course, you have the polypeptide itself, which could be an enzyme, structural, or uh, secretory protein. Uh, amino acids joined in a predetermined order based upon the sequence of nucleotides in the DNA of that gene. Now, a look at mutations. How do mutations alter this entire process? Uh, mutations in general are changes in the sequence of DNA nucleotide bases. So a genetic mutation is a permanent change in the sequence of bases in DNA. Uh, two basic types of mutations are point mutations and frame shift mutations. A point mutation is a change in a single DNA nucleotide and therefore a change in a specific codon. So you're changing one nucleotide at a, at a time. A frame shift mutation could be very detrimental to the building of a protein because it occurs when one or more nucleotides are either inserted, you have an addition of nucleotides, or deleted. Uh, removal of nucleotides from the DNA. So a point mutation, if you look, uh, you could have point mutations ATA, ATC, GTC. Uh, basically what happens by 
by changing that, you change the messenger RNA, and you could either change uh, the messenger RNA where it still codes for the same amino acid, or you could have it code for a different amino acid, which would lead to a faulty protein, or uh, you could have a really bad effect on it and change the what, what would originally code for a, an amino acid, now would code for a stop codon. And we'll talk about uh, mutations in your worksheet in more detail. So many agents can cause DNA mutations. Some mutations are spontaneous, while others are due to environmental mutagens. And an environmental mutagen is an environmental agent that increases the chances of mutations. Such are carcinogens, which can lead to cancer. So carcinogens are cancer-causing agents. Uh, tobacco smoke uh, contains a number of organic chemicals that are known carcinogens. Uh, some uh, chemicals can be carcinogenic. Uh, UV radiation, radiation, exposure to sunlight, uh, tanning beds, so on and so forth, are known environmental mutagens that can lead to cancer. Uh, transposons are jumping genes. Uh, this idea came about from Barbara McClintock, and basically transposons have the following effects. They are involved in transcriptional control because they block transcription, and they can carry a copy of the host genes when they jump and can be a source of chromosomal mutations such as translocations, deletions, and inversions. If you go back to the very beginning lecture of this unit study when we uh, discussed these types of deletions, inversions, and translocations in chromosomal mutations, this is where they come into play. We didn't really talk about those yet, but that was that uh, lecture from the end of our previous chapter. So basically, they can leave copies of themselves in certain host genes before jumping and being a source of duplication. They can also contain one or more genes that make a bacterium resistant to antibiotics. The last thing we have to discuss, and we'll do it in class, is a basic overview of DNA packing, especially with that in the eukaryotic cell, and we'll do an in-class discussion on that after we finish going over translation and these various types of mutations and transposons. This is our last major lecture for uh, molecular biology of a gene. Have a great day.